In today's video, I would like to talk about a new plugin from New Gen Audio. The plugin is called Halo Vision, and it promises to be a comprehensive tool for the analysis of 3D and immersive audio. And uh, well, I have some thoughts about it, so let's get right into it. But before I do that, first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Antoinette Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. And if any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. An invite link is in the description below. And please also don't forget to press the like button because of reasons. Before I get started, I need to point out that this is not a sponsored video, so everything that I'm going to say is strictly my own opinion. I actually purchased that plugin during the pre-sale period, and we will see if that was actually a smart purchase. And little spoiler alert, I have some buyer's remorse, but we will see why. If you're not familiar with NewGen Audio, they are a plugin developer that is actually very well known in the immersive audio space. They do produce a couple of plugins that are really useful if you're working with spatial audio, immersive audio, 3D audio. I've actually used some of the plugins myself in previous videos. In particular, I used the Halo Upmix plugin in order to convert stereo content into 7.1.2 content in one of my Dolby Atmos videos. So if you are in the space of immersive audio, 3D audio, spatial audio, there's certainly a plugin developer worth checking out. Out. The plugin that we're going to check out today is Halo Vision, which is the latest offering. It promises to be a comprehensive tool for the visual analysis of immersive and 3D audio. Now, it does come in at a very hefty sticker price of 299 bucks. So uh, at the end of this video, we'll actually see if it's worth the sticker price. So let's get right into it. Now, in order to demonstrate the capabilities of Halo Vision, I'm going to use a very simple project today. Um, it's essentially just one loop that I'm going to route into the bed of a Dolby Atmos setup. That's really everything that I'm going to do today. Uh, and we're going to kind of see how Halo Vision can be used in order to demonstrate or in order to visualize what we're actually doing with this particular bed in this particular setup. I'm going to use Nuendo today. Uh, any multi-channel DAW can run Halo Vision, so um, you're fine uh, with any multi-channel DAW. Uh, also, then don't let distract you by the fact that I'm using uh, a Mac today. This plugin works just as fine on Windows. Um, doesn't make any difference whatsoever. So let's just have a brief look at the uh, project that I'm having. For those of you that have been watching my channel for a while, you already know that particular loop. It is a loop that comes with, I, 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 I'm not completely sure, either Cubase or Nuendo, but it's essentially just a simple loop that I'm going to use in order to demonstrate what the Halo Vision plugin is actually doing. And uh, it is technically a stereo loop, but it's it's really just mono. So uh, what I did is I just folded left and right channel together and uh, I just positioned it right in front of the listener. So this is essentially the position of that object. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm routing that into the bed of an Atmos setup and the bed is then routed into the Dolby Atmos renderer, which sits on a 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos bus. If you are unfamiliar with the Dolby Atmos setup, I invite you to watch one of my previous videos on how to get started with Dolby Atmos. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. For the purpose of uh, reviewing what Halo Vision is doing, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. So if, you, if you're not quite sure what I did with the Dolby Atmos setup, don't worry. We don't really need that. Now, in order to demonstrate the capabilities of Halo Vision, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop an instance of Halo Vision onto our bed channel, and then we can see essentially what we can see with Halo Vision on, on our bed channel. So let's go back to our bed channel. And uh, I've already done that before. So if I open up the inserts uh, here i have an, ins an an instance of halo vision so let's open it up now the first thing that you notice when you open up halo vision is that the uh, interface looks slightly dated and i think that has uh, a lot to do with the fact that they chose to use different colors for hours minutes seconds and uh, and frames and that that is sort of a little bit strange quite frankly uh, it looks uh, like a web page design from the 90s you know kind of the time where you had like web pages where every single word was in a different color it just doesn't look professional and that's something that kind of annoyed me a little. Also, the spacing is a little bit off. Why is there so much space here? But once again, these are superficial things. If the if the plugin works fine, then this is not an issue. And I should also mention that you can change the colors here. So if if uh, you are annoyed by that, like I am, uh, you can simply change the colors. You can also rearrange the views. So if uh, you're kind of annoyed by the fact that these uh, kind of views are so small, you can actually kind of change them and and drop certain views that you don't need. There are also a couple of uh, presets that you are, that are available to you. So for example, there's a a view that only contains the basic, uh, you know, kind of uh, information or the uh, correlation information with respect to the center channel 
or a general correlation information and so forth. So there are a couple of different views that you can use. For this particular video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with the all views view and I'm going to go through the each individual um, view here and uh, kind of give some impression of what you can do with it and what its purpose is. Now, the first one here on the upper left corner is what they call a correlation network. And what that really kind of shows you is the correlation or the phase correlation between the individual uh, channels. So if you have a negative phase correlation between the right channel and the left uh, side uh, rear uh, channel, surround rear channel, uh, essentially you will actually see that in the uh, correlation network. And we're going to see that in a second how that works. Now, I'm a little unsure about the uh, purpose of that and the utility of that and I'm, I'm, I would be really interested in opinion so if you have any opinions about that and I'm going to probably say that a couple of times in this video please leave a comment in the comment section below because I, I some things that are a little bit puzzling to me and this uh, correlation network is one of those and we will see in a second why that is. Now on, on, the, on the right to that we also have a second correlation view. This correlation view is a correlation matrix gives you basically the same information, although there's a, some additional information about the level of correlation there. Um, in this particular case, it's set up as a matrix where you have the correlation from each channel with each other channel in one of those little kind of boxes here. And you will essentially see they, be, they become green if there's a positive correlation and they will become red if there's a negative correlation there. Uh, right to that, we have a, a time code information and we can actually switch that out. We can change that uh, from frames to samples to milliseconds. Then we have the uh, the basic uh, meter that we, that we can use here. It kind of shows us the meters for all individual channels. So that's certainly useful. Uh, and uh, left to that, we have two um, views that I personally think are probably the most important ones. The first one is a um, frequency haze, and that shows you the distribution of frequency in the direction of uh, from the listener. And in order to see what it does, maybe we should just kind of start a little loop here. Um, so let me just start the loop. And uh, by the way, for each of those views, if you want to have it bigger, you can simply click on here. You have here kind of the button that makes it bigger. And that essentially makes that bigger. And what we see sort of is here the frequency distribution in a certain direction. So this, here's the listener position. Now, once again, it's not surprising. The uh, loop, uh, kind of the position of that loop is right in front of me. Uh, and sort of I see the frequency distribution in that direction. It's, it's not, it's, it's essentially just horizontal. So there's nothing going uh, upwards. Then I have another view which uh, looks at the location information. So um, if I make that larger, I essentially see the location of the sound, where it comes from. This is a view that you see quite often in Ambisonics productions. Um, and there are actually three alternatives to this particular view out there that you can use. So if you're just interested in a location-based analysis of your sounds, um, this might not be the plugin to go for. There are actually three versions of, or the three solutions out there that do pretty much the same thing. Um, but this is certainly one of the more useful views. And uh, then we have a uh, spectrum view. And this spectrum view is nice because it allows us to um, sum certain channels. Um, so what we can do, for example, is we can go into the settings and we can group certain channels. Uh, so in this particular case, we have four groups. And uh, these four groups uh, are, first of all, the left and the right. The center channel is one group. And then we have the surround channels and, the, and essentially the, uh, the, the, the top channels. So, so you can sum them up in groups and then sort of see how the individual groups, uh, what the what the frequencies distribution in those individual groups sort of is. Now currently we don't really see anything in the correlation network and in the correlation um, in the correlation matrix. And the reason for that is because I simply have a monode loop that I'm routing into the bed. I'm not really kind of uh, panning that around very much. Um, in order to actually get something going on in the correlation, what I would have to do is I would have to add an effect. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simply add a reverb. So let me just, let me just move that over here. And uh, I've, added my trusty HD card. It's already on the channel, so let's just uh, start that up. So now I have uh, an additional reverb um, on that particular channel, and I now see action in the correlation network. So essentially this reverb is now really giving me some 
additional information on all the other channels and uh, the um, correlation network is now firing up. Now, I would really be interested to learn more about what people think about uh, if this is actually useful information, because currently, quite frankly, I would not really know what to do with it. Now, I'm, is it really important that you know that there is a phase correlation between uh, one of the front channels to one of the surround channels? I am not completely sure. Now, obviously, and let me just stop that for a second and uh, and kind of talk a little bit. Now, obviously, uh, phase correlation is really important for mono comp compatibility. So if you have a stereo production and you want to make sure that everything works fine in mono, what you would do is you would check the correlation, the, the phase correlation between left and right channels so that if you, if you sum that up into one, then um, the, um, the, the, the mono would still kind of sound okay and uh, essentially the uh, phases would not cancel each other out. Uh, that's something that you want to avoid. The situation is slightly different in a surround environment. Um, I'm not, honestly, not completely sure what what additional information or what, what important information you get if you know that there is a phase correlation between uh, one of the front channels and one of the surround channels. Now there's one exception and that has to do with the spectrum here. Obviously, if we, if we are looking at the spectrum here, these, um, these spectra are uh, created by summing up the individual channels. So this uh, correlation network certainly gives you some additional information to interpret that spectrum here. Um, but other than that, I'm honestly not completely sure what purpose it serves. Um, other than that, it kind of it looks cool. Now, um, you can change all kinds of settings. I should have mentioned that. So if I go into the settings, for example, and I want to make sure that the um, that, I'm, that they are not firing as often as I want to, I can actually change the threshold. So for example, I can move that, uh, that down and that will essentially kind of make sure that I'm only seeing uh, certain correlations that, that are really high. I can also change something that, uh, that they call contextual correlation. So I can change from, let me just set that back to 50 so that we go back here. I can change that from contextual correlation to standard correlation. Now the difference between standard correlation and uh, contextual correlation is that uh, in standard correlation, you're just really just measuring the correlation or the anti-correlation of those two signals. And that might be useful in a surround sound environment because uh, if you have, for example, a signal that is very loud, that is coming out of one of the front speakers and a signal that is very quiet, that is coming one of the, out of the, one of the surround speakers, they might be highly anti-correlated, but it's still not creating a issue just because of the difference in loudness. Now, in order to take that into consideration, they kind of came up with a different type of measurement, which they call a contextual correlation that sort of only is only triggered if you really have an issue in, in terms of the uh, signals that are anti-correlated and also at the same level, really. That, that's sort of the idea. So what are my views of uh, Halo Vision? Now, I've already kind of pointed out a couple of times that I'm not completely sure what the purpose of the correlation network is. And if somebody can enlighten me, I would certainly be interested to learn. If there are any professionals out there that can tell me a very, very specific scenario where this is really, really useful. Now, I do understand that there might be very specialized situations where an audio engineer might be interested in that particular information, but I just don't see that as something that a regular producer would really need. Uh, certainly not somebody who is producing in a bedroom studio. So if you are a professional and uh, you always wanted to have a correlation network visualization, you are probably already aware that you wanted that and you need that. And for those of you who are kind of really on the fence, um, you probably don't need it. Um, so um, so that, that's, that's my view. But once again, leave a comment in the comment section below. I would really be interested in hearing your opinions. Now, with respect to the things that are really useful here, and that is certainly the frequency haze and the um, location haze, um, that is really, really interesting. That's really important to have a tool like that. The only grievance that I have is that is because of the price of the plugin. It's 300 bucks. And quite frankly, there are tools that do similar or almost the same thing and for free. So, so the question is, do you want to spend like 300 bucks for something that you can potentially get for free somewhere else? Um, that, that, is, that is a question that everybody needs to answer. 
Uh, it is a first attempt. Uh, I command uh, new gen audio for doing a tool like that. I think that is highly needed. I'm just not really sure if the execution is where I wanted it to be. But once again, this is a first attempt. And uh, I'm most certainly um, looking forward to any improvements that they do in the future because the, once again, they do produce a number of really useful and really good plugins. Now, this is really everything I wanted to say today. Thank you so again for watching my videos. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment in the comment section below or join my Discord community. In that link in this is in the description below. And with that being said, see you at the next video.